everyone and welcome again in this video we are going to learn how to use at the rate post mapping annotation and we will see a bit more on request and response models so let's get started till now we have seen how to use get mapping we have been returning the data from the api as get mapping annotation corresponds to http get method but now we will see how to create the resources to create the resources we use http post method and by that we mean the client would make an http post request to this api and then the api will create a new resource so for example if we are creating a post mapping for the user controller then we will create a new user in the system before that let's take a step back and see how a post request would look like to do that we'll go back to the postman tool the first thing that we need to change is the method because we can't use http get method to create the resource it's not a good practice so we will change it to http post second thing is we need to call the appropriate endpoint of the api that will create the new resource so here we have the user controller which has the base address as slash users which means localhost colon 8080 slash users and we can use the same url pattern for post methods as well so we don't need to explicitly define any other url pattern we can but we are not going to we will simply use the same base url which is slash users so let's go back to the postman and use this url so we are saying the client would make an http post call to this endpoint and it will provide some data the api will listen at this endpoint it will have a post mapping and then the api would create a new resource in the system and will return the response back to the client all right the next thing is how do we pass the data to http post method because in this case we are going to create a new user so how do we provide the user detail to this api using http post method in case of http post method the data that we provide is part of the request body so it goes with the request body and we can provide the content in postman under the body tab here it is so if we go to the body tab we see different options like none form data form encoded raw and this json so we are going to use json that means we will provide the user data in the form of json that will be passed on to the api so let's define that we are going to have three parameters the name of the user age and email so name dummy user then age 19 and email email at the rate gmail.com and notice the headers the headers that will be passed as part of the request so you can see the content type in this case is application slash json because we are passing the request or the user data in the form of json all right right now if we hit the send button we see the error could not send the request because in this case the api is not up and running so let's do that so the service is up and now and if we retry the same operation if we hit send again we see the error message you can see the status 404 and we see the error not found because we are trying to call the post endpoint of this api at this url and we are passing this data but there is no matching endpoint defined in the api that can intercept this request and that can process this request so first we need to create that endpoint that can listen to this post request all right so we'll create a new method in the user controller because this is related to the user so we'll use the same user controller public for now let's keep the return type as void and then the name of the method we'll say create user okay and same as what we did for the http get request we used get mapping to capture http post requests we need to use another annotation which is post mapping annotation and notice we have not defined any url pattern it means it will listen to http post methods at this url which is localhost colon 8080 slash users which is the base url of this user controller let me note it down here 8080 slash users so this is going to be the base address or the url for this particular post mapping method so we created the binding but how do we read the data how do we consume 
the user data this one how do we consume this to do this we'll create a new model in the project and we'll name it request so let's create a new package request and in this we'll create a new class user request like this and we'll define the matching number of properties so name age and email private string name private int age and private string email next we'll define the getters and setters for all the properties and to string as well so we have the request model in the system all right let's go back to the user controller now in order to consume the data which is coming in the request and map it to this request we'll use another annotation which is request body and the new model that we created user request so what spring boot will do it will check the content of the request and it will see there is a json content like this and it will also see that we are using this annotation so it will try to map the properties from the request to this pojo that means all the matching properties like name age and email would be mapped a new object of this model would be created and injected into this method so that we can use it and if we simply try to test it we can log the user request here just to test if the properties have been enriched and notice that we are not returning any response the return type is void and if we rerun the api so the api is up and running and if we retry the same request this time we don't see any error the status is 200 we don't see any output as well because we are not returning anything remember that the output is wide but we see the user request we see that spring boot was able to create a new object of this model and it was able to map all the matching properties so we see the name dummy user age 19 email which is at the rate email.gmail.com and once we have the data once we have the data from the request we can do anything that we want we can have a database connection we can pass this data to another service and that service can talk to the database to create the new user and it can return the response accordingly in this example we are not going to connect to the database but consider there is some business logic to create the user and in the end we will simply return the response the important thing is how do we create the mapping and how do we consume the data from the incoming request so here for now we can create a simple response like a new user has been created like this and we can change the return type to string now let's rerun the api this service is up let's go back to the postman retry the same request and this time we see the response a new user has been created and the status is 200 this is all fine but let's say we have to return a more sophisticated response as part of the request so consider we received the request then we inserted that user in the database and we need to pass some more information as part of the response maybe we want to return the user id that we created and the timestamp when the user was created back to the client so how do we return the response or more information in the response back to the user to do that we can have a model for the response as well same as request so let's create a new package response and in this we'll create a new class user response and this can have a string property let's say id and another property local date time we can name it created date time that's it and let's create getters and setters 
and two string as well. Like this. And going back to the controller, now instead of returning a simple string, what we want to do once we have completed the request, we will create this response, which is user response equals to new user response. And then we can set the ID, basically a fake ID. To do that, we can use UUID from the java.util dot random UUID dot to string and response dot set created time we can say local date time dot now like this and instead of returning the string we will return a response uh, here it is like this so instead of returning a string, we are now returning a more mature response in the form of a POJO. And if we rerun the API, and test the same request again, this time again, we see the status okay. And this time we have more information in the response like ID of the user, which was created. So we can use this ID in the subsequent requests. Let's say we have to read the same user so we can provide this id back to the api and the timestamp when this user was created and the good thing about this is that we don't have to do any conversion any translation on our own we simply need to provide the pojo we need to create the objects and everything else will be handled by the spring boot spring boot will convert the incoming request to the pojo that we define because it will see that we are using this annotation and similarly, when we are returning the response in the form of a POJO, it will automatically convert that response from POJO to JSON, which we see here in the Postman. So this is JSON basically. So in this video, we learned how to bind the methods for HTTP POST requests using POST mapping annotation and how to consume the request data using at the rate request body annotation. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.